welcome to Laveen's Cancer and Zen on Kuro.io. Uh, it's a yeah. pleasure to host hi. you. Yeah, hi, good morning. Good morning, how are you doing? Thank you for giving this opportunity should, to share my journey. Thank you, Zen on Co. Uh, I'm a very great fan of Zen on Co. On this platform, I am getting a lot of inspiration from the stories you are sharing or the programs you are conducting. I am thankful for that. Uh, we are glad that you decided to share your journey with us. Uh, okay, yes. uh, so why don't you go ahead and just tell me about your symptoms and how was it diagnosed? Yeah, uh, actually it all started on 21st of uh, September uh, 2019 when I was uh, uh, just, uh, I came home after uh, my day's uh, work and then I suddenly started feeling pain uh, in my left breast. And uh, it was uh, so severe and so sudden and so severe that uh, I got panicked. I generally, I do not prefer to visit hospitals and all. And I can manage myself, I mean, uh, like uh, simple medicines uh, because I do not uh, had any much, uh, means like I did not have pressure, sugar, no, no disease as such. So that's why I was very confident. But this sudden pain, I could not bear. It was um, uh, like... I booked an appointment and I visited a doctor, a gynecologist. I had no idea that um, this is uh, not a subject of gynecologist, but I did not have that idea. Uh, I visited her and I was normally treated like with the high doses of antibiotics and uh, some tests were done. And uh, then after I started antibiotic, I had another symptom that is... Uh, there was uh, some secretion and it all started. So I got scared, but for one and a half months, I was treated with uh, antibiotics and all, I mean, hormone treatments. Then I started going through internets and I found this may be a dangerous issue. I, severe, I several, so several times I asked doctors, do I need to consult an oncologist because I have my little daughter who is a younger daughter who is only 11 years old at that point of time. So she, they say, they try to solace me. That was Durga Puja time. And they said, no, enjoy Durga Puja. Then we will see nothing to worry. But I could not stop worrying. So that was the phase when I uh, decided to head to cancer hospital. We have a very good cancer hospital here, Tata Cancer Hospital in Kolkata. And um, I visited directly to the hospital. And the doctor, I was lucky enough that the doctor on the first visit itself, he told he it is not like something which is a, a general infection or something. I want to do a biopsy. So that was the first day I visited alone to the hospital. Actually, my husband used to stay in Delhi. And uh, I am, uh, so I was, but I am always a strong lady. Okay, I took it. Okay, that's fine. But I have to identify. I should know what has happened. If it happens also, I have to treat and cure myself for my daughter and for my family. So that was my strength. So I went on. He said, Ki someone should uh, means, uh, accompany you. So I called uh, my husband. He came and I did, we did mammogram. We did. But uh, all this, through all these procedures, it was identified that I have Paget's disease. And that's nothing but it is stage zero breast cancer, one sort of. But it was not um, invasive. It was only ductal. Then I have undergone surgery and I find uh, myself fit again in the Jan January 2020 and I joined back office. Then uh, we had, um, I was leading a normal life. My doctors told me that nothing to worry and uh, you are free now. You can enjoy your life. Uh, I, I forgot everything. And one fine morning, again in the month of uh, May, May, 
I started feeling pain. And that was the second time, but it was, you know, peak of Corona. So I got worried. I cannot visit hospital. Even for some period of time, that hospital was also closed. I thought I will not go. Then I delayed. And uh, that was my big mistake. And uh, uh, finally, I, after a video call to the doctor's consultation, thereafter, I visited the hospital in the month of July. And that was very late. I was scolded and by the doctor and he said, you are late and it is stage three. Then again, the test procedures went on and it was stage three, uh, invasive carcinoma. Fine, now, and the, and the first chance I thought is how it can happen to me because uh, I started recollecting uh, whether I have done any sin, whether I have done anything wrong. Uh, what I told to him might, he was hard that point of time and that's why uh, uh, I did not do well to him. That's why it has happened to me. This is very natural, very natural. People will think why it has happened to me. But then again, I started reading many uh, means, uh, life journeys and all. I came to know this will happen to me. I will feel like why it has happened, but I have to overcome it. And then my treatment started. Doctors immediately said, you have to start with your treatment. That is the chemotherapy, eight session of chemotherapies. Uh, first four was epirubicin. Then second four was paclitaxel. Along with that, since I am ERPR negative and hard to positive, I am having transtuzumab. Transtuzumab now 17 doses of transtuzuma, which is still going on. Every 21 days, one I get. During chemotherapy, it was horrible. First two, I was unable to take. Like, means, uh, I thought, how I will, um, uh, means, uh, cross over this journey. It is very difficult for me. I could not imagine I could be able to finish this journey and stand again on my feet. So uh, initially, my family supported me. My husband is very positive, you know. He's from the very beginning. He had never shown any uh, means thing like we are in trouble. What has happened to you? How we will do? Uh, why it has happened? Oh, it is so sorry. We are so sorry. No, this, this was not his expression. He was always fit and he was always smiling and he was always encouraging oh it has happened you are not able to work let me hold you ah though this sort of means when i was not able to stand on my own feet he was like my he never said that oh it is so sorry it is so sorry scenario he was a, i'm grateful to him my family I have uh, my very old mother, 82 years old. She stays with me. She's also very strong. She never have cried in front of me, you know. She has never shown uh, like, uh, it is a very sorry state. No, never. So all these things gave me a lot of courage. And my younger daughter, she was also in front of me, standing in front of me. And she was never, have, I mean, she was, a strength to me. My elder daughter doesn't stay here. She stays abroad. So um, when my uh, hair started falling during my journey, my daughter told, we will also shave off. Hmm. Our head, because we all want to look alike. That was the kind of support they gave me. Uh, but anyway, it was a time which has passed. And uh, with everyone, it is very tough to uh, pass, I know. But uh, with uh, another thing is, you know, which is very support to me, I love singing. So I, even on the hospital beds, during initial chemo, I used to be hospitalized very frequently. And I had to stay there for five days, once for 13 days, one for uh, this uh, sort of normal fever comes, no, your WBC goes down and your fever comes and you report to hospital and a lot of IV, IV treatments goes on. 
So uh, that was going on. And uh, I used to sing uh, and record my songs on the hospital beds. And I used to sing to my friends and they all were with me in that journey. My friends, my family, my husband, my daughters, my parents, everybody were with me. My in-laws, she used to ask me how she used to take treatment when she was uh, very interested to come and stay with me to help me. And she came and she stayed with me for some point of time where I was very sick. So all support from all has given me strength. And then I came to know uh, one of, from one of my uh, old colleague that uh, this um, dimple of from uh, from him i came to know about dimple and uh, he got this uh, made this connection with her and she's so friendly she's so sweet uh, god bless her and uh, with um, i also one point of time i was very means uh, uh, like uh, confused whether my treatment is going on what the treatment going on is correct or not whether the doctor who will do the surgery is correct or not but that point of uh, time she supported me she supported me a lot okay she inquired about this uh, hospital about this doctor and all this because it was relapse case no so that's what i had in mind some point of time whether it is correct why why it relapsed otherwise so anyway this then uh, after this uh, chemotherapy we had um, uh, this uh, surgery and uh, surgery was also I decided uh, myself to do the double mastectomy though it was uh, affected um, uh, only one side but uh, I myself was very strong my daughters my daughter from US she told he removed both you do not need to take any chance or risk because today I am 50 if it, uh, something happens in 60, it will be very difficult for me. <laughs> so I took this decision. Okay, I'll be doing double mastectomy. I did double mastectomy. Doctor was also not very convinced initially, but looking to my you know, will means I want to do it. Uh, they finally supported me and it is done. Now, after that, I had undergone this radiation, 15 sessions of radiation and... Uh, my biopsy report post surgery came very good. Uh, that means uh, it was it has treated very good uh, in chemotherapy. It has responded very good in chemotherapy. That's why they did not find any stress of tumor or something. And um, after this, that now I am uh, doctor said you are free. You can uh, do your daily course of uh, duties. Now I joined back just uh, in the month of April, I finished my last uh, radiation. And in May, I have joined back to office. My office also has supported me a lot. They have given me this opportunity to work from home because, because we are uh, in our office is such that it is, though it is a design and a you know, company, but we support construction too. It is a lengthy construction. So that's why we need to uh, physically be present in office. Uh, so, but my office uh, organization has given me this opportunity to work from home. I'm doing work from home and it is very good. Now, today I am here with you. And it means one point of time, I was not able to know that I'll be one day, I'll be sharing my experience. And uh, at all, means after everything, it is a good end. That's it. I would like to know what is your favorite song you mentioned that you used to sing and record. So can you tell me your favorite song? Like what was the like favorite song which you used to record during that journey? I have recorded many Jangeet, many Hindi songs. I, you know, I, uh, I, I fav I'm favorite of all type of songs. I sing all type of songs, like uh, sometimes it is Ravindra Shangit, purely Ravindra Shangit, sometimes it's Atul Prashadi, sometimes it's, means I, I do not have any preference. I love all type of songs, Hindi film songs, I like very much. And everything is, uh, means uh, my favorite. And Mu music actually heals your soul. If you have like something which can help you through this, this is amazing. And as you said that uh, you are a strong lady, 
that actually proves because you went to a cancer hospital tata memorial you knew that you are going for a test and you went alone like i i could never do that i could never go alone like i know i'm going for this test i don't know whether it's positive or negative but i would never go alone so i yeah. i know that you're very strong that you went alone yes because uh, because i was having my intuition ki something may go wrong actually i and uh, i i left office at 11 o'clock to visit my gynecologist on leave that uh, that day that particular day 31st of october 2019 that day i left only to meet my gynecologist i had an appointment but on the way to uh, he had i had in my mind ki what is the fun that one and half months i'm not i'm getting treated but i'm not getting well so Uh, let me directly visit that hospital and rule out there is nothing so i visited but doctor asked me who is with you i said i'm alone no problem my husband is my <laughs> means always he though he is not physically but uh, i know he's always with me means actually you know from the very uh, small age only i am very much independent even the age when i passed out uh, my engineering in 1993 i went to, to do my job in ropar district nangal huh? and that point of time also i have traveled alone a lot because i had to um, go come back sometime to home and again go back it's a, a tough journey means like you have to go to delhi then you have to take a bus from isbt to chandigarh then you have to change another bus and you reach nangal at maybe 10 o'clock in the night so it's fine i was uh, i can manage i could manage that's by god's grace <laughs> yeah we can do everything alone but it's it's good to have a support like i i, I am happy that you had your husband you have your husband support like he's there yeah. with you and he has supported you throughout the journey like yeah once uh, once it was means i felt like uh, i need him the next day morning he was with me leaving his one of his very important uh, means uh, training for his promotion you know that was his sacrifice he was undergoing a training for his uh, means next promotion but uh, when i called him he i need you at that point of time he left the training in between and he did not go back for say um, uh, one month till my first or second and then uh, he asked for transfer to calcutta and the our organization was very much supportive and they transferred him to him to calcutta so now he he lives like uh, you live you live together. he lives in calcutta only otherwise it was not possible for me all alone to go through this i mean treatment procedure this is very very means uh, uh, the treatment needs a uh, strong support how yeah. how did you disclose this news to your family like your to your daughters and to other members in your family yeah actually initially when it was uh, first time during first time only me and my husband knew uh, that point of time till i uh, admitted to the hospital i said it is just a simple infection and i need a small surgery and which hospital i was visiting my family members and my doctor younger doctor was not knowing even my elder daughter was having exam examination at that point of time we did not say but you know every morning every day morning my elder daughter calls me that's her night time so when two days i was in hospital and she was asking about me and my husband says oh she has slept she has gone to bed already so there was some intuition in her and she said i knew something is wrong and you are not telling me and that gave me lot of tension and then we thought it is it was not okay actually everything you will be share, sharing with your um, in siblings uh, daughters and uh, uh, your family and friend that's uh, that's the correct approach actually from the very beginning but i was very scared what they will be thinking what they will be feeling like so i did not tell my mother also 
then when I came back from first time surgery, then I disclosed okay, nothing to worry. It is all done. Now I am okay. So you all do not worry, but this is the disease. So that point of time, my younger daughter felt very bad. She said, why did not you tell me earlier? So that's at that point I felt I should have told her earlier. So she was also at the age of 11, she understood like what cancer means and yes, that's, that's very smart. Like yeah. she understands everything. And through my journey, when I'm going through my journey, she has understood a lot. She is very supportive also. And she is very much, my both daughters, both daughters are very much supportive. Yeah. They're always with me. They say, Mama, you do not worry. They said, I will, we will all your shave off. I said, what is, what do you think? I'm not very much worried that my look is like this. I'm not at all worried. I'm happy with what I am. Yeah. But it's, it's the courage that you need that your family members are standing beside you. So yes, yes. That it's is a support. Fun. It's a great support. My family members, my friends, all were means every time they used to ask, how are you? What are you doing? Don't uh, get disheartened. We are all with you. So because now, you know, this, uh, because of Corona, nobody can visit me. It's all through, I mean, so online chatting and all. So that's all a great support. It's fine. Like uh, there are a lot of side effects of chemotherapy. And as you mentioned, Corona, so it's time pay infection. Like uh, it's a, like uh, there's a lot of, you know, uh, like so there can be infection and a lot of things. So how did you like manage all that? You know, initially I was uh, very much uh, scared about Corona and I am very disciplined and strictly uh, I follow. Okay, this is to be uh, one, once I reach office, no, I used to clean my desk at least uh, five times a day with sanitizer. That sort of a person I am. I am changing my mask every after two hours. So it has got dirty. Leave it now. I am a new, I'm wearing a new mask. I'm washing my hands 10 times. That was my approach. But once chemotherapy started, no, I had very little control on me. And uh, sometimes I was removing uh, this mask at hospital because I was not able to take breath. So that point of time I had Corona. Yes. Yeah, oh. I had Corona. <laughs> my full family, because of me, my full family got Corona. And uh, what happened, uh, it was like um, after one chemotherapy, I used to have fever after every chemotherapy. And uh, it was very high fever. Okay, so it came. So I thought, okay, it's my fever just after chemotherapy. On 1st of October, I took chemotherapy. And 6th of October, as usual, I had high fever. So I visited hospital and uh, I was given antibiotics. And this time I told you, I do not want to get admitted. You just give me oral antibiotics. So they supported me. They gave me high doses of antibiotics. I came back. Then I started feeling I have no sense of smell and taste. So that was, and for everything, I read too much. Means when Corona came, no, I have read everything about Corona. Whatever is coming in news, whatever is coming here and there, that's my very bad habit, you know. Ah, knowing everything and uh, worrying, oh, this is not to be done, that is not to be done. This way, <laughs> it also creates a lot of tension. So uh, I uh, told, uh, immediately I thought I have corona. So now I visited hospital. I asked doctor, doctor, I'm not getting smell and this. Do I need to test corona? Uh, my doctor is very much means... Uh, Oh, nothing has happened. Don't worry. This sort of um, supportive uh, doctor. He said, nothing, no, nothing has happened to you. I said, no, doctor, I'm not having smell. <laughs> I'm not having taste. You just tell me. If you tell me, I will do taste. He said, I am a mad person. He said, okay, you go and do corona test. 
So then what happens? Immediately the whole environment in hospital changed. They have uh, put me inside a room because it's an isolation uh, strategy and uh, procedure of the hospital. No? They put me inside a room and uh, all PP uh, cladded person came to see me. Huh, then I started feeling, ki, oh, something really, it is a uh, very bad disease and what I have happened, uh, what has happened to me is not good. Then I started saying, no, I don't do any test. I will not do any test. Huh, they said, no, you have to undergo test now. Okay. Then uh, I was all right otherwise. Huh? I was all right. Then they said, no, you have to undergo test. Then... Uh, um, I said, no, I don't, don't do. He said, what is this? Nothing has happened. Why are you wearing this PP? Huh. So they took me, they took, uh, did, did, um, took me to isolation ward and they tested me. And after two days, I came positive. But by the time, my whole family members had this corona. So it's fine. We, did, we had dealt with it. I was... Uh, you know, initially three days after the report came positive, I could not sleep for three days, three nights. I could not sleep because I was not thinking, not worried about me, but I was worried about my mother, my 62 year old. I thought if something happens to her, how we will be dealing with, I have a disease and she's also not well, then what will happen? But God, you know, God saved us. She had no symptom. Though she was positive, but she had no symptom and she was perfectly all right. And only me and my husband had some symptom, symptoms. My daughter was also all right. After three days, after two days of smile, mild fever, she was all right. And my husband had fever for seven days and I had fever for two days. So okay, fine, but that was a journey. But uh, that was uh, one of the problem. Uh, my chemotherapy got delayed by 42 days. You know, what happened? It is every 15 days I used to get on chemotherapy, but I was not coming negative. Because every time I go do the testing, it is, I have no symptom, but I'm positive. So I used to call doctor, doctor, what will happen to me? Now I'm not getting chemo. Maybe my chemotherapy will not be so much effective. He said, nothing doing, we cannot do anything. Then after 42 days, I got my chemo. I was negative and I got my chemotherapy. That's, uh, uh, that was tough because I was thinking, okay, what will happen if I'm not, I'm not getting chemo? My, means though I'm uh, means, uh, getting a lot of symptoms in chemo, but I was welcoming, okay, please, I want to take this chemo. <laughs> At least it's something to get cured. Like I, I want get to get cured. cured. Yeah. But this is this is like very hard, like having Corona and this like together managing both. I I don't know like how to do that. Like delay. Mm -hmm. If your treatment gets delayed and like it, it's it's yes. it's one concern. It, like what will happen? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what I used to read. What will happen? What is the maximum days of? Means one point of time, doctor asked me, "Are you a doctor?" I said, no, I'm not a doctor. Uh, they believe, they started believing I had, I'm a doctor. My husband visited infectious disease doctor. He said, yeah, you are a doctor, no? So he said, no, I'm not a doctor. Then your wife is a doctor. Then he said, no, my wife is also not a doctor. Because I used to read, collect all the informations. And I used to go ask with ask them, what is not happening to me? Why this is happening to me? Why you are not giving this treatment to me? Why you are taking so much of time? Ah, so they used to start think, thinking that uh, I'm a doctor. I said, no. We're, uh, we're kind of like Google doctors. We, we read Google a lot doctors, of yeah. on Google and, and we try to diagnose yeah. ourselves. No. There are a lot of good sites, Mayo Clinic, NIH. All these are very good. Um, I mean, so they give good guidelines. No, their sites give good guidelines. But there are good sites, but there are like uh, like not good sites also where there are a lot of redundant informations which actually. No, no I don't. I don't read. I don't read okay. those any of the sites which are not related to good hospitals. John Hopkins, Mayo Clinic, NIH, NHS. All these sites are very good. They give very good information. The Mayo Clinic is a good site. I I have read yeah. on Mayo Clinic. 
Yeah, yeah, very good. Even we have like a site, so we also provide all kind of yes, information. Yes. Yeah. Okay, one thing this I was connected uh, to Dimple in the month of I think December 2020, and from that, this Jane Onko has become one of my part of my life. Like I will is always go through. I listen carefully to the survivors. You do the programs, and those are very inspiring. You know. even today i was seeing uh, someone uh, vidya i was seeing uh, means she has written she has uh, been written a very strong and bold message what she has given in, in her writing that's very much inspiring you know mm. actually uh, what happens is no ki uh, when you listen to doctors it's one thing listening to doctors because they are not going through it they are just telling you what what is going yeah. to be done what is going to happen and how how you are going to be treated but listening to people who actually went through this journey and who are going through this journey is a different thing you can relate ki ha this is going to happen to me and this is happening so that's that's a different kind of motivation and inspiration people need so that's yes. why we do these cancer healing journey sessions to inspire and motivate people that there is a future ahead of you yeah this platform is you know excellent it it helps i attend every session uh, uh, i attend all the sessions in fact and uh, i listen to the their story you know i get motivated and i feel okay means i'm not all alone in this journey and uh, how they have dealt with it that gives me inspiration i also have to do this way only i have to conquer this uh, disease and that's great inspiration yeah but like did you take any sort of uh, integrative treatments or complementary therapies uh, other than your medical treatment during your journey no no i have not taken i have taken uh, this um, onco dietitians consultation through jane on conley and she and has given me a very good diet yeah she has given me a diet chart very good diet chart and she has given me a, I, i think from your organization only i have got a very comprehensive uh, this treatment package okay that gives me all guidance for meditation all guidance for yoga guidance for diet and lifestyle changes all these things uh, not particularly about any ayurvedic or any other sort of treatment i have taken but with this guidance you know i have made my own routine ki i'll do this yoga sometime i will do this meditation sometime i will do deep breathing sometime so that way i have received guidance from your organization only and that i am following and the diet uh, which she has given that has um, made me i think that is very much very good i am not able to follow 100% because uh, it is a uh, they stress on non vegetarian diet okay but i am being pure non veg for so many years i am not able to leave but i am avoiding this red meat and i am avoiding fish most of the time those thing means i am taking guidance from that diet chart and uh, sometimes i am i'm not able to means control myself and i take chicken and all that's a <laughs> different thing <laughs> but dimple has suggested me you leave everything it will be better for you but okay i think by another one year i'll be able to leave everything <laughs> we have cravings we we crave yeah. certain things yes, sometimes yes. i i am trying to lose weight so Uh, i am also on a very strict diet although so i crave pizza i am like i need pizza i want to eat pizza <laughs> uh, pizza is also very bad it, it is having msg that mono sodium gluco glucomate or something which is not good for uh, our health but it is you know whenever my daughter brings pizza i ask for give me half cut half cut from one piece huh? i cannot resist always it is very difficult it's it thick it's like thick like at least you can eat a little bit sometimes very uh, rarely but yes. you you eat sometimes for the soul also like for your yes. soul so that's like soul food not for your body ah, you have to enjoy you see whatever will happen will happen let us enjoy 
Yeah. The one very important thing I forgot to tell you, this disease has changed me a lot. You know, for last 27 years after passing out from college, 27 years, I was running after my job. I was only doing my job. I was not means, uh, I was not that much social. And after this disease uh, means uh, was detected, I completely, I, I, my means, uh, my means uh, for life, uh, how is life? that I started understanding. Means how you have to enjoy life, how you have to uh, be with your family, with your friends, we have to you know, share your times, you have to have some good memories. Those things uh, means it has given me a lot of, uh, you know, understanding from that aspect. So that has made me rich in understanding the value of life. Did you make any like, uh, this is some personal changes which came in your life. Did you make any lifestyle changes like before and after treatment? Uh, lifestyle changes uh, means uh, what sort of like diet I have uh, changed a bit. Uh, I was not doing any exercises and uh, <laughs> means yoga, nothing. So that I have started doing. I was not, I, I was not going regularly for uh, means, uh, morning walking. That I have started doing. So there are some changes which I have uh, uh, done because uh, I feel good in that. Okay, I just want to ask this that uh, what is your like one message that you would like to give people who are still fighting this battle? Don't give up. Have faith in yourself and have faith in God. I, I strongly believe in God, you know, uh, from the very childhood. I strongly, there is no God you can say, but there is one strong means faith. It is, it is nothing, but it is your strength. It is your strength, mental strength, which uh, gives you, uh, which if you, you, you have faith in God, it gives you a strong sense of means, uh, strength and strong sense of self-belief. That is very important. You will be, with this strength in mind, you'll be able to cure. You, you'll be able to, uh, overcome this disease actually that is very true because if you have faith in something it creates if you even if you don't believe in god if somebody doesn't believe in god there's this positive energy and positive vibrations around you yeah. which yes. heals you from outside and inside both so yes. it's very important to have faith in something in yes. someone so yes. there's like light at the end of the tunnel sort of thing have faith yes, yes. Uh, so Dhruba, it was amazing talking to you and you are actually a very strong person. I can see that after talking to you, like going hospital on your own, recording songs during your journey, battling Corona and cancer together, that's like something very hard to do. And like you have a family who went through Corona with you. So it's, it's, yes. everything is hard, everything is difficult, but, but you're right now sitting in front of me and telling me about your journey, sharing, me, sharing your journey with me. I can just say this, that you are a very strong person, very strong and independent. So yes. it's, it's amazing hearing, hearing your journey. I, I just feel so blessed that you decided to share it with us today. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for sharing your journey. Thank, thank you, Ritik. <laughs> but uh, just one thing, uh, there is this common uh, similarity, like my elder daughter is also Ritika. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. Uh, I don't think I've met a lot of people with the name of Ritika, but this is nice. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. So I have that Hindi, mein aap likte ho na, Rishi wala ri. like if I write it in Hindi, so it doesn't come like Ra, it comes Rishi, you, you know yes. that Rishi wala. so it starts with Rishi wala ri. Yes, yes. Sad Rishi. And we call her uh, Ritu. Okay. The nickname we call her Ritu. Yeah. My nickname is Dolly. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
Okay. Uh, thank but you. thank you from Lavil's Cancer and Zenonco.io. And it was amazing talking to you. And taking, uh, thank you for taking out your time. Thank Take you. time out of a busy schedule to do this. Thank you very much. Have a good day, Dhruva. Yeah. Thank you.